Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to I Read Pasta. Today I'm going to be reading the creepypasta Smile Dog. This was a creepypasta suggested by Wolfpack. Thank you, Wolfpack, for making the suggestion. And for anybody else, if you have any you know creepypastas you want me to read or any SCPs that you found interesting, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I will read them and well, I'll try to. And I'll also give you a shout out if I do read them. So again, Thank you, Wolfpack, for the suggestion. And also, anybody else, if you're new to the channel, please make sure to like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. I first met in person with Mary E. in the summer of 2007. I had arranged with her husband of 15 years, Terrence, to see her for an interview. Mary had initially agreed since I was not a newsman, but rather an amateur writer gathering information for a few early college assignments, and, if everything went according to plan, some pieces of fiction. We scheduled the interview for a particular weekend when I was in Chicago on unrelated business, but at the last moment, Mary changed her mind and locked herself in the couple's bedroom, refusing to meet with me. For half an hour, I sat with Terrence as we camped outside of her of the bedroom, I listening and taking notes while he attempted fruitlessly to calm his wife. The things Mary said made little sense, but fit with the pattern I was expecting. Though I could not see her, I could tell from her voice that she was crying, and more often than and more often than not, her objections to speak with me centered around an incoherent diatribe on her dreams, her nightmares. Terence apologized profusely when we ceased the exercise, and I did my best to take it in stride. Recall that I was, wasn't a reporter in search of a story, but merely a curious young man in search of information. Besides, I thought at the time I could perhaps find another similar case if I put my mind and resources to it. Mary E. was a synopsis of for a small Chicago-based bulletin board system in 1992 when she first encountered Smile JPEG and her life changed forever. She and Terrence had been married for only five months. Mary was one of the estimated 400 people who saw the image when it was posted as a hyperlink on, B on the BBS. Though she is the only one who has spoken openly about the experience. The rest have remained anonymous, or perhaps dead. In 2005, when I was only in 10th grade, Smile JPEG was, the fir was first brought to my attention by my broadening interest in web-based phenomena. Mary was the most often cited victim of what is sometimes referred to as Smile Dog. The being Smile JPEG is repeated to display. What caught my interest, other than the obvious macabre elements of the cyber religion and my proclivity towards such things, was the sheer lack of information, usually to the point that people don't believe it even exists or others believe it's a rumor or hoax. It is unique because, though the entire phenomenon centers on a picture file, the file is nowhere to be found on the internet. Certainly, Many photo manipulator simulacre litter the web, showing up with the most frequently on sites such as the image board or chan, particularly the unknown focal focused power, paranormal sub board. It is suspected that these are fakes because they do not have the effect the effect the true smile JPEG is believed to have, namely the sudden onset temporal lobe epilepsy, and acute anxiety. The purported reaction in the viewer is one of the reasons the phenomenon like smile JPEG is regarded with such disdain, since it is partly absurd, though depending on whom you ask, the reluctance to acknowledge smile JPEG's existence might be just as much out of fear as it is out of disbelief. Neither smile JPEG nor Smile Dog is mentioned anywhere on the Wikipedia, though websites feature it articles on other 
and such other perhaps more scandalous shock sites such as Hello JPEG or Two Girls, One Cup. Any attempt to create a page pertaining to Smile, Smile JPEG is summarily deleted by any of the encyclopedia's main admins. Encounters with Smile JPEG are the stuff of internet legends. Mary E.'s story is not unique. There are unverified rumors of Smile JPEG showing up in the early days of Usenet, and even on pers persistent tales that in 2002 a hacker flooded the forms of humor and satire website Something Awful with a deluge of Smile Dog pictures. Re rendering almost half of the forum users at the time epileptic. It is also said that in the mid to late 90s, the Smile JPEG circulated on Usenet, and as the as an attachment of a chained email with the subject line "Smile, God loves you." Yet, despite the huge exposure these stunts would generate, there are very few people who admitted to have experienced any of them. And no trace of the file or any link has ever been discovered. Those who claim to have seen Smile JPEG often weakly joke that they were far too busy to save a copy of the picture onto their hard drive. However, all alleged victims offer the same description of the photo, a dog-like creature usually described as appearing similar to a Siberian Husky, illuminated by the flash of the camera, sits in a dim room, the only background detail that is visible being a human hand extended from the darkness near the left side of the frame. The hand is empty, but it usually describes, is described as beckoning. Of course, most attention is given to the dog or dog, dog creature as some victims are more certain than others what they claim to have seen. The muzzle of the beast is reputedly split in a wide grim, revealing two rows of very white, very straight, very sharp, very human-like teeth. This, of course, not a description given immediately after viewing the picture, but rather a recollection of the victims who claim to have seen the picture endlessly repeat in their minds, eyes, during the, t the time they are, in reality, having epileptic fix fits. These fits are reported to continue intermediately, intermediably, often while the victims sleep, resulting in very vivid, disturbing nightmares. They, these may be treated with medication, though in some it is more effective than in others. Mary E., I assume, was not on effective medication. That was why after my visit to her apartment in 2007, I sent out feelers to several folklore and urban legend-oriented news groups, websites, and mailing lists, hoping to find the name of a supposed victim of Smile JPEG, who felt more interested in talking about his experiences. For a time, nothing happened, and... At length, I forgot completely about my pursuit since I had begun my freshman year of college and was quite busy. Mary contacted me via email, however, near the beginning of March 2008. Dear, doc Dear Mr. L, I am incredibly sorry about my behavior last summer when you came to interview me. I hope you understand that it was no fault of yours but rather my own problem that led me to act out as I did. I, I realized that I could have handled the situation more decorously. However, I hope to, you will forgive me. At the time, I was afraid. You see, for 15 years, I've been haunted by Smile JPEG. Smile Dog comes to me in my sleep every night. I know that sounds silly, but it is true. There is an ineffable quality about my dreams, my nightmares, that makes them completely unlike any real dreams I have ever had. 
I do not move and do not speak. I simply look ahead, and the only thing ahead of me is the scene from that horrible picture. I see the beckoning hand, and I see Smile Dog. It talks to me. It is not a dog, of course, though I am not quite sure what it really is. It tells me it will leave me alone if only I do as it asks. All I must do, it says, is spread the word. That is how it phrases its demands, and I know exactly what it means. It wants me to show it to someone else. I can, I, and I could. The week after my incident, I received in the mail a manila envelope with no return address. Inside only was only a three and a three and a half inch floppy disk set, diskette. Without having to check, I knew precisely what was on it. I thought for a long time about my options. I could show it to a stranger, a co-worker. I could even show it to Terence, as much as I, the idea would disgust me. And what would happen then? Well, if Smile Dog kept its word, I could sleep. Yet if it lied, what would I do? And who was to say something worse would not come for me if I did as the creature asked? So I did nothing for 15 years, though I kept the diskette, diskette hidden amongst my things. Every night for 15 years, my old dog has come to me in my sleep and demanded that I spread the word. For 15 years, I have stood strong, though there have been hard times. Many of, many of my fellow victims on the BBS board where I first encountered Smile JPEG stop it posting. I heard some of them committed suicide. Others remained completely silent, simply disappearing off the face of the web. They are the ones I worry about the most. I sincerely hope you'll forgive me, Mr. L, but last summer when you contacted me and my husband about an interview, I was near the breaking point. I decided I was going to give you the floppy disk. I didn't care if Smile Dog was lying or not. I wanted it to end. You were a stranger and someone I had no connection with, and I thought I would not feel sorrow when you took the disk as part of your research and sealed your fate. Before you arrived, I realized what I was doing I was plotting to ruin your life. I could not stand the thought, and in fact, I still can't. I am ashamed, Mr. L, and I hope that this warning will dissuade you from further investigating Smile JPEG. You may, in the time, encounter someone who is, if not weaker than I, then wholly more deprived, someone who will not hesitate to follow Smile Dog's orders. Start while you still hold. Sincerely, Mary E. Terence contacted me later that month with the news that his wife had killed herself. While cleaning up the various things she had left behind, closing email accounts and the like, he happened upon a message. He was a man in shambles. He wept as he told me to listen to his wife's advice. He found the disc, the disc he revealed it and burned it until it was nothing but a stinking pile of black in it plastic. The part that most disturbed him, however, was how the disc had hiss in it as it melted. Like some sort of animal, he said. I will admit that I was a little uncertain about how to respond to this. At first I thought perhaps it was a joke with the couple belatedly playing with the situation in order to get a rise out of me. A quick check on several Chicago newspapers, online arbitraries, however, proved that Mary E. was indeed dead. There was, of course, no mention of suicide in the article. I decided that, for the last time, I would not further pursue the subject of Smile JPEG, especially since I had finals coming up at the end of May. But the world has odd ways of testing us. Almost a full, full year after I'd returned it from 
my disastrous interview with Mary E, I received another email. Hello. I found your email address through a mailing list. Your profile said you are interested in Smile Dog. I have, I have saw it. It's not as bad as everyone else says. I have sent it to you here. Just spreading the word. The final line chilled me to the bone. According to the email client, there was one file attached called, naturally, Smile JPEG. I considered downloading it for some time. It was mostly likely to be a fake. I imagined, and even if it wasn't, I was never wholly convinced that Smile JPEG of Smile JPEG's particular powers. Mary E's account had shaken me, yes, but she was probably mentally unbalanced anyway. After all, how could a simple image do what Smile JPEG was said to accomplish? What sort of creature was it that could break one's mind with only the power of the eyes? And if such things were patently absurd, then why did the legend exist at all? If I download the image, if I looked at it, and if Mary turned out to be correct, if Smile Dog came to me in my dreams demanding that I spread the word, would I do it? Would I live my life as Mary had, fighting against the urge to give it until given until I died? Or would I simply spread the word, eager to be put at rest? And if I choose the later route, how could I do it? Whom would I burden in turn? If I went through with my earlier intentions to write a short article about Smile JPEG, I decided I could attach it as evidence. And anyone who read the article, anyone who was interest, who took interest, would be affected. And even assuming that Smile JPEG attached to the email was genu genuine, would I be capricious enough to save myself in that manner? Could I spread the word? Yes. Yes, I could. <laughs>